Okay, so we're gonna begin our root cause analysis. All right, um, because this is our first year together um, as seventh grade science teachers on our team, I was gonna go over the reasons that we would do a root cause analysis. Um, these are assessments that we are trying to find causes for any type of issue that would come up um, within our team, or it could be campus-wide, um, but it is for continual improvement. Um, it, to, it is to ensure equity and excellence in education for all students. Um, when we identify root causes, we can begin looking at all possible solutions to complex problems. This needs assessment should guide our decision making, justify our decisions before they are made, most importantly to close the gap between current performance of student success and the performance of our students. All right, because we are getting together, um, I wanted to, okay, did we all sign in here? Okay, so this was our committee organization chart. This basically says who's here um, and what our purpose and desired outcomes are. Today, we have found two issues um, that we have found on our campus and we are going to try to put, implement some action steps to help all of our students succeed. Just a reminder of our mission and vision here at Haskett. Our mission is that we are challenging all learners by cultivating relationships and creating authentic experiences in a safe and equitable environment. And our vision is that we're empowering our students to make a difference and achieve greatness. So the two issues that we have identified, um, I know this is something that we've been talking about all year. Um, with this uh, root cause analysis, I thought this would be a great time to look at the issues that we've been seeing. Um, we've gathered data before, um, but the first problem is that there's a trend of test scores decreasing amongst modified seventh grade science students. And this is happening as the school year has progressed. Data has been collected and reviewed from all assessments given thus far for the academic year. These are all gonna be campus-based um, assessments. An average of test scores have been computed and modified scores are averaging at 40.63%. There is a need to identify the problem, the root cause of the decreased scores amongst this population of students. Action steps need to be identified and implemented to assist our modified students to increase future successes and to close learning gaps that may have occurred during the school year. Using this data should alert administrators to look campus-wide at the same population of students to compare data with other content and grade levels. So for this first issue, we are going to look at the evidence together. When we gathered evidence, uh, I took uh, the CBAs that were modified um, throughout this year, so there's seven of them. Um, we're also looking at CBAs of peers in the same academic setting as our students that have modified curriculum, okay? Um, the DLA was not modified, so um, I did not feel that it was a marker to compare with the peers that were not modified. Um, formatting accommodations versus modifications is something we might wanna look at as well. So here is the data. These are the averages of the mod test scores in seventh grade science. Um, these are our modified students. And this here is the data of the seven test scores for our academic students that are not modified. So understanding that our modified students are still in the least restrictive environment, these are the peers um, that they are taking the assessments next to the same TEKS. Looking at our SPED data, our approaches are 40.63%, meets are 15.9%, and masters are 8%. Compared to their peers that are in the same classroom that are not taking a modified assessment uh, from 40.63 approaches with our mod students, the other students are at 71.69%. Meets for modified students is 15.9, where with our other academic students, it's at 35.36. Um, and then masters is 8% versus 17.29%. And remember, this is also including um, our students that are accommodated as well, okay? So they're falling under the scores with the academic, okay? So this is our first issue, root cause analysis. So we are going to do something that's called a powerful brainstorm. 
and we have a fact-based data-driven challenge. Our challenge is um, our scores that we are looking at this data from our modified test. Um, for three minutes, we're gonna be thinking of as many possible contributing factors to why our students are not um, performing um, successfully on their modified test. Um, and then after that three minutes, um, we're gonna share those brainstorming ideas. Okay, so I gave everybody a post-it note and the clock is going for three minutes and go ahead and start. Here you go. I'm sorry, we can do it one more time. Yes, I'm for sorry. three minutes, okay. we are thinking of as many possible contributing factors that um, is could be like the cause okay. of why these test scores are so low compared to their peers that are taking the regular academic test or the accommodated test. And one per post it? Correct. Okay. One thing that I should take note is that um, we are seeing our, you know, we are seeing that our students are being successful in their classwork. We are seeing that um, scores are not dipping this low on their quizzes. So we need to take a look at why is this happening on their test scores. like to share with y'all as well that I brought over here. That is it, that's our three minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna take turns sharing one at a time um, ideas and posting the challenge um, until all ideas are shared, okay? Did you wanna start one? Sure, um, my first one, to me the biggest one is not modified correctly. What's not modified correctly? Um, the tests have just been the way, I don't know how to word this. Um, our school has it where they just take out one problem out of the answer questions. Whereas okay, so the test format itself is yeah, not the modified. Yeah, the test format is not correct yet. Okay. Okay, um, I put down that due to the fact that they had a failure rate at the beginning, mm -hmm. they just continued to just give up like hope 
and they have no self-esteem when it comes to taking tests. They just don't care anymore. They don't. They just assume they're going to fail, so they don't try. Okay. Um, they're not using their accommodations. Um, if they have headphones, they're not using their headphones because those are the kiddos that usually have the headphones um, to help them read. Okay. Um, they don't read everything if it's a longer question or anything. Again, it goes back to a modified test. You shouldn't have the long, lengthy questions, which they could. Okay. So, they, yeah. so I'm going to actually add that to that the test isn't okay, modified sorry. correctly because it looks like um, it's going there. And then I also have about the environment. Um, if the test is not taken like in an actual prior room, they could be distracted um, if they're taking it out in the hallway because the, there's kids that are you know roaming, going to the bathroom, going to the office, going to the nurse, whatever. Um, but then also you have a lot of the kids that go get that get pulled for a small group. Um, because those are all kind of usually grouped together with the mock tests. You know, they get pulled for small groups. Um, they don't, a lot of them are the behavior kids. And so you have all the behavior kids with someone who is not the main teacher and they don't get that even if the other teacher and you say, hey, this person has the same equal characteristics. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I don't sound So right what I'm now. hearing you say on this situation is that the peer professional, the co-teacher may not be utilized in the classroom and um, in the system that the children are not seeing them as the no, teacher? No, I just think it's more of the kids think that it's not the fact because I, I mean, personally, like I tell all of them, like you guys, I mean, they have the same equal rights as I do. Like they are just as equal as I am, um, but I know they still behave for me better than they do the paras and so okay. when they get pulled they think that they can get away with more stuff and that's distracting so you and the, again statistically all those mod kids are usually getting pulled for small groups okay so the environmental fact, yes okay so I'm gonna put environmental um then also again these are the kiddos that just don't again they're lower so they're usually on average, they're not taught. Maybe not, Maybe they are taught, but they're not practicing how to take test strategies. That's preparation. Um, and then um, that one kind of goes off the system there. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So definitely not using accommodations. Okay. I'm gonna kind of group these mm -hmm. together so we get these organized. So, so yeah, just them not choosing to use the headphones. And that, that's an important thing, like you can't really force them, but at the same time, it's something you need. And I think it's it would help them succeed. Um, mod test changing from sort of when we were making them, having to go to Turner, that was making it more, um, I guess, them getting ready for STAR, having that STAR, I guess, to piggyback on, having it to match with, like, STAR, which okay. for, I mean, for some of these kids, that's not possible I think that's where it comes into the lengthy words and the multiple more answer choices that I think it okay, I'm gonna put this much. with the test formatting because mm -hmm. that has been changed on this where it's more like they're getting an academic accommodated test they're not getting a modified test okay mm -hmm. so I see that sort of transition where this last time when we took it over again they did do better having to fit with this star expectation, they weren't doing as well. Um, I guess also with format, again, going back to having it to be measured to what we expect them to know and get from what we have been going over. Mm -hmm. um, and then also not getting modified correctly. Okay, so those are probably the um, And then I also agree with small group maybe not being effective. Mine, the ones I have, they're not necessarily behavior it's more of them getting distracted, so them not having a classroom setting, sort of, I guess, maybe. Again, they're getting distracted, they're seeing kids come by to where I think some of mine, more specifically, are rushing through it. And um, especially some that shouldn't be getting, you know, the 20s or even 15s, I think it's just because they're rushing to come back in. Okay. So it's sort of that, um, and again, like, same thing, I guess, half my class, Pretty much half of them go outside, half of them stay in. 
but more than maybe should I be the one that takes their academic kids out and my modified stay in the classroom? I don't know. Okay. And then also, yeah, um, maybe matching like the test review again, mm -hmm. what we did last time, just giving them their own specific one that is meant for their mod test, that type of test review, I think might be helpful as well. Okay, awesome. I'm going to put that over here. Test preparation. Um, so I um, also am with you guys that the test um, is not modified. Um, I think we are giving them an accommodated test. It is a academic test that just has one answer option removed from it. So um, when a child has a modified curriculum, they should have a modified test. So I'm gonna go place that over here. Um, one thing I brought up that I thought was worth questioning were the children present. Like did attendance of our students affect these scores? So just something kind of to throw out there. Um, we might have to dig a little deeper with that. Um, again, this goes back down to the modification. Um, we have through this year had a change in the staff member that was um, modifying the test. Um, so that's when it started to look a little bit different. Um, I also thought, well, maybe mine doesn't fall under environments. Mine was utilizing the co-teacher and the para correctly because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for our um, students with special needs that have disabilities for them to be in a small group more often than not to be able for that co-teacher to teach the first lesson in a very small intimate group where the parent could do a second teach for students that need that extra reinforcement so were these systems put into play um, and did they affect are they one of the causes of these low test scores so uh, we have done our brainstorming now we have to get to a root cause. And something that we are going to use is called a fishbone diagram. So I'm gonna give y'all both one. And we have our post-it notes. So the problem statement is that we're looking at the, um, the low scores of our modified students. Compared to their peers. in the same academic setting. And we use this fishbone diagram because we have the problem up at the top, but then we are going to put the causes off to the side. So we have grouped them already here. So we need to start writing the causes there to come down to a root cause. Because if we can find the root cause, then we can make an action plan and implement those action plans so that we can close those gaps and to help these students. I'm gonna go check all the different Okay, so first cause, um, environments. You feel like the environment itself needs to be looked at. That the environment of who takes the students and where. Because I'm hearing from you that your students are going outside into a hallway where there might be distractions. Yeah, that's the only place they have. Okay. There's no other way. So having a system in place for ahead of time, knowing where pairs or co-teachers can take the students yeah. into a quiet classroom or a room in the school would be helpful. Okay, our biggest one, because all of our, you know, not all of them, but many of our post-it notes ended up within the formatting of the modified test. This is something that I know we've been frustrated with all year. We have come up with a solution, I thought to myself, okay, well, we actually are a little bit ahead of this root cause analysis today because we said, we were so frustrated ourselves, we said, forget it. We took the modified test away from a staff member, we did it ourselves, scores have gone up, we've had celebrations this past test, but then I realized we didn't truly do what was purposeful, which was the root cause analysis because one person or one, you know, three people this could be a campus-wide issue, right? And so we have to get down to the root cause so that everybody on this campus benefits mm -hmm. from our implementation of what strategies we are going to use to um, close these gaps. Okay, so formatting of the mod test. Okay, um, 
y'all also said students weren't using their accommodations. I would say 98% of my students are using their accommodations. How many students are y'all feeling are not using their accommodations? Um, I would say probably are or aren't, I'm sorry. Are not. Are not, I would say probably. Well, I would say probably 50%. When I say the accommodation, the one that I'm specifically talking about, okay. those are the ones. The other accommodations, yes, mm -hmm. they're using them. Which, if they're not using their headphones, then they're not getting orally accommodated. Yeah, so that's, so that, that's the, the main one that I'm thinking of, and I'm, you're probably thinking the same thing as the headphones. I know so. So on this fishbone diagram, I have down the environment uh, needs to be looked at where they're taken to formatting of the actual mod test. We've identified it is an academic test with only one answer option taken out. And, and this is why our, our, ch our children, our students that are getting the modified curriculum are getting to a test that's not modified. And how would we have ever expected them to be successful if they didn't have the tools in their tool belt to be successful on that academic test, right? So I think that's probably our biggest factor. Um, we also talked about test preparation needs, which I think is fair to say, if we're going in and making sure that the formatting of the test is truly becoming a modified test, then so does the test review. We need to have those two aligned. So I think that's fair to say. So when we're looking at um, the root cause, we need to look and see what is the root cause of these causes that causes this problem. I think, I can look at mine now, I'll watch my fingers. Um, I think one, it can go down to like this one and this one is definitely the teaching. formatting the of the formatting test. is like the teaching of how to actually format it. Um, there's a lot of well, it's this way, it's this way, it's this way. So that it would be the um, the teaching of the staff. Okay. Um, so we need to professionally develop our staff, mm -hmm. and that can even go. You can even throw in test preparation to, into that as well. Yes, I agree. To be okay, um, so professionally develop our staff to be able to create modified test, mm -hmm. test preparation, and implement a system for small group testing. Mm -hmm. And also the training of how to handle students that aren't using their yeah. accommodations, okay? So to me, I'm thinking we're, everything's pointing in that direction that the root cause is that our staff, including us, we're not properly, we don't have the correct training um, to be able to, um, that we didn't have the proper training and that's why we're seeing all of these issues with our test, okay? All right, thank you guys for that. We're gonna move on to our other, our second problem. We're going to brainstorm. The same process over again probably will be a little bit faster this time. So we'll grab our post-it notes. Here's our second issue. Teachers are frustrated with the IEP, IEP implementation for several reasons. Um, before uh, we did this, I did a staff survey and a focus group to get this information. Um, teachers are frustrated with the time that some accommodations take to implement and report that there is a need for more knowledge and skills to support their students' IEPs. Teachers feel unsupported by the special education department as the only help that is offered is to come to a professional development that requires extra time before or after school during the school year. Many classrooms with students with IEPs do not utilize the proper systems to implement the student's goals. For example, breaking into small groups with a co-teacher and paraprofessional. General education teachers, co-teachers, and paraprofessionals do not get collaborative time together to plan for the individualized needs of their students Teachers are frustrated with students that refuse to use their accommodations on their IEPs. Okay, so that's our second problem. So now we brainstorm again. What is the root cause? What are the reasons this problem exists on our campus? Okay, 
and let's go. So let's go around this one by one and like add to um, to identify. We did our brainstorming for our second issue um, that we are having. Again, we had a focus group. Um, we also had a staff survey that went out to hear the perspective data on um, this particular um, issue. Okay, go ahead. If you want to, we'll go. This um, way. Not enough time for communication. Okay. Or between Sped. Yeah. Okay. Lack of communication. Okay, I'm gonna add that to that. One last minute announcement, Dungeons and Dragons Club is canceled today. So if you were gonna stay for that club, please make sure to make your way to your parents outside in the car or to the buses. But make sure you don't make your way to the library because they will not be holding the club today. Thank you. Oh, and we have one more bus, bus 5228, which is in the sixth position. Go Huskies. Oh, this might make this video a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I put time to collaborate with um, our paraprofessionals, our co-teachers that are part of the special education department. So I'm going to put that all together. If you think. Okay, um, I put down that there is not training and working with the types. So these kind of go together. So I think a lot of people, when they think of SPED, they think of like there's just a lot more to do with them. There's more paperwork. There's more. So it's kind of like it's almost overwhelming slash they kind of not put it to the side but it's it's a hassle for them and so they don't give it the attention and the enthusiasm that they need to give it to the students mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. that's kind of what something i talked to my co-teacher about today um was that he said I, that he is a co-teacher in my class he co-teaches for two classes in the school science and English, so not even related. So could there have been some alignment where that would have helped him with his workload? He has 30 um, students as a case manager. So, and then for the rest of the day, he teaches four resource classes. So he said that it's very overwhelming. There's not time for collaboration, but he also feels like there's might have been a better way to organize his workload as well. So he feels like he's not able to contribute as much. Um, I put support from special ed department. This probably goes because we don't get to collaborate with them. Um, yeah, so same thing of lack of time either to plan or collaborate with um, our co-teachers and parents. Mm -hmm. um, well, I get my novel will jump in. Okay, I also put training to handle students that refuse accommodations. Yeah, um, and then I also put, again, yours kind of goes with it. Um, there's a divide between your general education teachers and your special education. Um, and I just know hearing that from a lot of other people in other campuses, it's very common as well. So, okay. again, communication. Uh, training time, just, I mean, in all of these, they, there's probably something out there to look into. Okay. Um, also, our quick support is there, but I don't think people really know how to use each other, I guess, yes. in a way. 
Um, and then also I just put unknown, which could go in training and here as well, just the unknown of how to use a co-teacher in part of it. Okay, and we do have a very young campus here at Haskett Junior High. We have many uh, young and new teachers. I put valuable and purposeful training, but also collaborative professional developments. It would be nice to go to professional developments with our in-class supports. So I'm gonna kind of put that together. And what I'm seeing, and I'm sorry this video went over just a little bit due to all of the bells, but we have uh, brainstormed, we have come up with numerous ideas of why uh, issue number two has been coming up. What we're seeing, if I can break it down right now, um, for the root cause analysis, very heavy on not having enough time to collaborate with um, our special ed in-class support, special ed department, um, but also oh, there's four here as well of wanting that training. So um, again, th these kind of can maybe overlap into some of the same problem that we had uh, with the first problem as well. Looks like a definite need for training, professional development, um, so that uh, teachers feel uh, like they have the right tool belt and also the time that we need to be able to collaborate with those um, specialists as well.